I don't have any education in art. It's not my profession. I'm 38 and I began to make collages more or less regularly only five years ago and began to draw only four years ago. I'm self-taught and by some good luck I took art in three exhibitions and I was rejected a couple of times. And I strongly believe that art is one of the best transformative tools in the world. Hey my friends, if you're new here, I'm Anna and this is my channel about everything that is mindful, minimalist and creative. And today I'm in a more creative mood, so that's why I decided to share with you my art-related experience and encourage you to make art yourself. So if you're a beginner or a struggling artist or you always wanted to try but never believed you could create, I am here today for you. Do not limit yourself to something one. You can try m more than just one creative field. You can try a lot of art, I don't know, like spheres. And it's okay if you find that in some fields you don't find a lot of creative comfort. So for example, I tried a lot of stuff in my life like painting, photography, uh, classical drawing, but um, Honestly, I wasn't good at them at all and it's okay because alongside with those not pretty successful um, art experiences, I discovered my true passion, which is collages and partly dot work. You can never tell which food you like the most unless you try a sufficient amount of different uh, like products, uh, but you don't have to try everything, like everything that is accessible in, in this or that way. No, just, just enough to awaken your creative muscles and play around. And uh, also by art, I don't mean just visual arts, but um, other forms as well, such as music. And I, I always wanted to play music, but I couldn't. I can neither play it, I cannot sing. But who knows, maybe, maybe things will change. Because for example, even 10 years ago, when I was 28, I didn't create anything. And if someone would tell me that I would uh, exhibit my works and feel okay about it, I would be very, very much surprised. And yeah. You don't have to show your artwork. Today there is sort of unspoken obligation to demonstrate everything that you create, otherwise it's not considered valid. <laughs> But if you are an introvert or a highly sensitive person like me, you can encounter certain struggles um, with exposing your artworks in, like to other people, be them beginners or not. And anyway, I don't believe that there is beginner's level or advanced level, because it's all like a constant process of exploration. And when we cut it in fragments, or in stages, we, uh, we lose that feeling, that liberating feeling of flow, uh, of that wild and unpredictable flow of inspiration. When I made my first attempts to create, there was no Instagram yet, I didn't use Facebook, so I just created for myself for my desk after work. And it was such an intimate process, an ultimate creative self-care, if you want. Then with Instagram gaining pace, I created different accounts for my various art projects. And the first one was for uh, a cartoon character named Chirp. So I draw some, um, some cards and cartoons with, with him. Uh, or them. Yeah, I, I don't think that my cartoon character had any gender. <laughs> but anyway, then as a multi-potentialite, I decided to leave that project for another one because I got interested in, in dot work. So I decided to uh, explore it more and more. 
I'm not a fast creator and I failed to keep up with the pace of Instagram and I, I never posted every day and not even every week and it didn't make me feel quite good so I touched upon this uh, thing in one of my previous videos you can check that out like about the social media and how it influences the um, creative process but uh, at the same time there was a lot of good things happening there on Instagram because I met some really wonderful artists and amazing art community and I got a lot of inspiration too and um, I found about the uh, ongoing art events and exhibitions so there was there was uh, something positive in that but I still think that uh, social media and my Instagram experience messed up my creative vibe in some way, which takes us to the next point. Avoid comparing yourself. Yep, this good old beaten truth. Just you be you and create with an open heart. When I just started, um, making dot work art uh, it was kind of an art therapy for me because you know those little dots it's like a form of meditation and when i got on instagram i i saw that some professional dot work artists used a very a technique that was kind of different from mine because i use very thick outlines and so on so the artworks are not that super airy as theirs and at first I was upset, but then I realized, and so what? Like, there is no one technique that could fit everyone. So we have to vary because it's, it's not the truth that is cut in stone. It's a process of exploration, of experimentation. And when you compare yourself and you begin to doubt yourself, you are no longer free in your uh, creative process. But on the other hand, um, looking at um, other people's artworks can be a huge source of inspiration for you. For example, reading poetry is a great boost for me to write because it's kind of um, I catch that rhythmical wave and then I want to create my own canvas of words and visions so it's very important to be careful and to listen to yourself and as soon as you notice that you begin to compare your art to somebody else's just stop don't let your inspiration get polluted Be honest with yourself whether you really want that exposure. And by exposure, I mean all kinds of different exhibitions, contests and publications, etc. There are a ton of them happening now in the art world. And it's mind-blowing the variety that you can apply to. There are both paid contests where you have to contribute a certain amount of money as an entrance fee and also there are uh, free exhibitions so i took part on uh, not took part i applied to four free art events and one paid one and i got rejected twice <laughs> and one of those rejection rejections was for uh, the paid exhibition or contest i don't quite remember what it was so yeah uh, my advice for you if you are just a beginner in this sphere try all the free contests that you that you want at first and also make it a fun experiment don't be too serious about it and decide for yourself whether you are really ready for it whether you really want it and whether you will be fine if you get rejected because honestly it can hurt and it can hurt a lot I know it, I experienced it, but on the other hand, when you are a success and when you are uh, accepted, it gives such an enormous boost that your creativity unfurls even more. 
In 2019, one of my dirtwork drawings was selected for an international graphic art festival, Unigrafica, in Krasnodar. And honestly, I was very surprised but because I didn't expect my artwork to be accepted and I didn't have any chance to go there and see the festival. But it was such a great feeling to know that I was part of it. Then, in 2020, I took part in an online exhibition of Siberian artists with my series of collages featuring vintage women and plants images. The idea was to show the time that forever stands still, the feeling of life being on pause during the pandemic. It was kind of an indie project and I'm so glad I took part in it and got acquainted with artworks of um, some local fellow Siberian artists. If you are interested, I will leave two links down in the description box. One to a, a website about Siberian art, but this website is in Russian and the team of that site was actually the organizers of that online exhibition. And another link is to a really interesting site of the New East contemporary art, which includes, um, which covers the art in Russia, uh, Eastern Europe, Balkan countries, so it's very interesting and it's in English. And the third event uh, that my artwork took part in was the Russian Collage Festival in 2021. I created a tiny collage that was selected for the program and now is part of the so-called Pocket Collage Museum collection. And again, I didn't have any opportunity to go to Moscow and see the festival, but I just followed it in social networks. <laughs> so it was very exciting to see and I was happy to be part of it. So, do I recommend to try and take part in various art events? Yes, definitely. But only in case if you know what you are doing and you are psychologically ready to be rejected. And also psychologically ready to be accepted, which is also <laughs> a huge thing. And on the more practical side, I want to give you some tips based, from, based on my own experience. If you want and if you're ready to begin to make art, but you have no idea where to start. First, um, as a minimalist, I recommend that you don't buy all supplies at once. Just use the bare minimum. For example, when I was just beginning, I used a regular pen that I used for writing and a regular watercolor paper. It was nothing fancy. Only later I got some uh, Micron pens and some other artist pens and I still think uh, they are <laughs> sort of a luxury and a treat. So you don't need much to, to start. And also maybe I sound like a broken record and please excuse me for that, but I cannot advertise the art of collage more because I think it's the most accessible form of art and everybody can do it. It's accessible for everyone, regardless of your income, of your background, of your aesthetics. And also um, on a minimalist note you don't need much like especially if you are making digital collages because you can even use the you know the canva program you can actually make collages in, in in that program and it's pretty easy and if you are into analog collages if you want to try it you just try like secondhand resources like old magazines or old books. For example, I use old books uh, that I owned or the ones from my parents because I know that I won't be able to use them in, in any other way. So I'm sort of giving them a second life. Um, creative transformation of clutter, if you will. And the last thing that I also keep telling myself every day, just not to forget, there will always be someone bigger than us, 
but it doesn't mean that we should ever stop growing. Let me know in the comments whether you're making art already or are just eyeing this opportunity and what stops you from making art. Thank you so much for watching the video till the end. You have a lovely and creative day. Stay safe and I will see you soon and пока-пока!